Hey, what's up? It's Tim from e -Mini Mind, and in this video, I'm going to walk through my trades from the week. wanted to talk about what you can expect on these holiday weeks and how you can trade them. And then I also want to talk about some signs of a slow day and how you can position yourself and identify early in the day, okay, is this likely going to be a sit-on-hands day so that you don't end up over-trading and just taking a bunch of stop-outs, getting to the end of the day and then wishing, hey, I wish I would have just not taken any trades. So let's jump in first with the larger picture on the ES. You can see going all the way back to COVID lows um, to our all-time high here, we've got a big downtrend um, from the rec uh, recent couple of months. And we know that the 50% retracement long is where we bounced on the ES here. Um, so kind of that 2020 highs, 50% retracement long, and now we are met with the downtrend where we have these uh, connecting these highs here, and that's what we see um, where we're at right here. Uh, intraday, well, going to the daily chart down from the weekly chart, you can see the recent swing low and the recent swing high. Those are really important to note because when we break swing lows or swing highs, that's when we tend to get a bigger push or a stronger move. And when we break a swing low after going in a series of higher highs, higher low, higher high, higher low, that's when we have the potential for a trend change and we want to start looking for a retracement short in the new direction. So if we start to break, uh, if we break swing lows after moving up, then we want to shift gears and start looking at shorts on the daily chart as opposed to right now, we've been trading in longs and looking for longs on the daily chart. So we know that we have some resistance above us here, um, even though we're bouncing off the 50% retracement long. Talking about that resistance, also want to look at where we're at on the daily chart here, we have not actually closed above this halfway back short, closed above its 61.8. So this was the retracement short that we kind of knocked our head on uh, once, twice, and then we pushed through it here. But look at these highs up here. Um, or look at the closes up here, rather. We had one day where we traded through the 61.8, but on the daily chart, I want to see a close above the 61.8 to validate that the downtrend is no more. So we've got a little bit of resistance here, both the downtrend line and the 61.8 still holding. Now, being a holiday week, we've got the Thanksgiving holiday here in the U.S. Uh, Thursday markets will be closed. Friday will be a half day. Um, I typically don't bother trading on Friday. And then the Wednesday going into Thanksgiving, uh, historically, it's an up day. Um, if you want to buy the open and hold to the close, you can. But by and large, you just trade it the same way I would uh, because I'm trading just in the morning. So if you're looking to, you know, maybe you still have a full-time job and you want to incorporate trading into your daily routine, especially if you're, you know, on the on the uh, West Coast and you can trade in the morning, then go to work, or if you're retired and you want to trade a little bit but not be tied to the computer screen all day long, then you know this style of trading where you're only really day trading the first 90 minutes of the day is super appealing. And it's something I've done for almost 15 years now. And uh, you know it's nice to be able to be you know very focused and, and routine and disciplined here in the morning. But then once the uh, morning session is done, you know I'm done for the day. So that's the you know the, the bigger picture. Talking about being done for the day or identifying, you know, the chance of it being a strong trend day versus a range bound day. That's where I want to take us next, and then we'll get into some of my trades or all. Of, I'll run through all of my trades from last week um, and today as well. But one thing that I like to look at that we've talked about is the 30 minute range. And um, I'll, I'll link to that video here in the top right, the 30 minute range. And what you want to do is look at the first 30 minutes and take the high and the uh, low of that 30 minutes. And kind of, I like to mark that on the chart so that I can use those as reference points. I'll get rid of these couple of retracements here so we can see them better. And when, we're trading with a, you know, kind of 
tight range and we are staying within the high and low or sometimes like in today's case we kind of just stay right on the bottom edge of the 30 minute range sometimes we'll be just inside the top edge of the 30 minute range um, that's a really helpful way to determine okay we're not likely to have a big trend day so long as we're just kind of hugging this 30 minute high or 30 minute low the other things that I like to look at are where are we opening in relation to the prior days range so red dotted line vertical line here is um, split between Friday and today, Monday, and look at how we opened right near the close. In the first 15 minutes, we basically came up, traded within that last 15 minute bar from Friday, and then we filled the gap in the very next bar. So not much of a gap, we filled the gap. Also look at the breadth and the advanced decline line. Those numbers have been very flat today. Another sign that we're you know, likely to be going sideways. And all of this information you know, I'm looking at in the first couple of minutes of the open. And so I'm determining that, yeah, it's likely to be a sit on hands day fairly early into the day. And then the last piece is this nicey tick chart on the bottom left. And for most of the morning, we were trading in a pretty narrow range of extremes. Like the high tick for the day was not even 500 um, for the first you know, hour and a half. So that's a pretty small range. We're not we're not seeing those plus 800 or plus a thousand. So wanted to touch on that because it's easy to overtrade, and if you can come into the day with a little bit of patience, that's a you know it can be it can be helpful. But you also need some tools to be able to identify uh, and quantify the chance of it being uh, more of a sit on hands day. And then the last piece is if you're not gapping very far. There's probably a good chance that you're also inside of the prior day's range, which uh, Friday's high and low looks something like this. And so if we look at where we are today, we spent most of the day inside yesterday's range. Look at how we broke down below yesterday's low. This was yesterday's low right here, and we, we broke down, and then we immediately came right back in. We did not spend very much time at all below yesterday's range, just a boop, boop, drop down, and then rallied back up. And so there's no follow-through, and when we come back into a range like that, um, it, you know, that range-bound price action is, you can expect it to continue. So today, I drew up... This trend line, um, like this, uptrend line from the last couple of days, this is just on a 15-minute chart, and um, didn't really do much uh, early in the day, just kind of sat on my hands, like I said. Um, there was a point where we broke below this uptrend line here fairly early. I'm going to switch to a 5-minute just so it gives us a little more data here at the open. Um, we broke below this uptrend line. We broke below the 30-minute low. And there was a glimmer of hope that we might get some trending to the downside. And so what I did is drew up the next retrace, or really the first retracement after we broke the 30-minute low. So that's that's here, 54.75. Uh, I didn't take a 15-minute breakout today because we tr we overlapped the last 15-minute bar. So the in the in the first 15 minutes we traded in the last 15 minutes of Friday, and so. Again, another sig another sign that likely to be uh, you know a sideways non-ripping trend day. So I drew up this retracement here, and this was a nice little setup. However, we did have a low tick at lows down here at 822. So I didn't take it short right at the 5350. Um, instead, I waited for us to break this little low right here, and took a just a real small retracement like this. Um, that went down to its negative 23, got a first target, got an extra point, um, and then, you know, we did not get that trend lower. We uh, turned around, so I just, I trailed my stop like this in the next 61.8, um, and then we, we turned around. So, got a little winner out of that guy, and there really wasn't much else uh, happening this morning. So, if we go back to last Monday, let's scroll back here. I didn't have... Um, a ton of trades last week, actually. Uh, the 50, well, we'll do the, we'll do last Monday, and then I'll run through the 15-minute breakout. So we need to go back to 
the 14th. And that was back here. I won't be able to pull up the, the tick chart. Um, actually, uh, fun fact, if you are on Thinkorswim, this little on-demand feature up in the top will allow you to go back and uh, get some historical data if you wanted to, to practice or run through uh, past trade setups. But if we go back to the 14th there and here, um, I had a long on Monday, the 14th last week, and that was at 8.11 which was back here. And that was at the top of the 30 minute range with no high tick of the day. We didn't have a high tick at highs. And so this was the, let's see here, to do top of the 30 minute range like that. And so this little long of mine was right here, 8.11. And it was a 94.50. So notice how when I draw up this retracement here, see how the yellow 50% retracement lines up nicely with the top of that 30 minute range? If this was going to be um, a morning, because sometimes we say, oh, it's a trend day or it's a range bound day, but you know, really I'm concerned with the morning session and we could start out in the trend day and you know for an hour or two and then it could just poop out and go sideways or we could start range bound for the first half hour 45 minutes of the day and then we break out into a trend and so this it's at this point that's why the 30 minute high and low are super valuable this point where we had the potential to start breaking out and going into that trend day we were at the top of the 30 minute range um, and so this 50 percent lined up nicely 39 94 13 was the actual 50 so when you round up that gives you a 94 and a quarter and then I just add a tick 9450 and then that went up um, like this so this one um, I used this swing low down here because I didn't want to leave you know this was a little bit bigger drawing if I drew the next retracement like this from low up to high that would put my stop down here at like a 97 and price was all the way up at a 4005 so i use this swing low here to trail like that and uh 4001 i believe yep 4001 was where i had my stop and then that's what took me out of the trade so got most of that move uh, then we pulled back that 30 minute high did act as support for you know the next half hour or so then we fell back in and that, that was basically the end of the session so um, that was my one trade from last monday as well now going through the uh the 15 minutes really quick last so today we did not have a 15 minute breakout because we overlapped that last 15 minute bar on Thursday, this was the first 15 minute. Let me get rid of these so it's not as cluttered. The first 15 minute bar, uh, I'm sorry, Friday. This was Friday. Um, first 15 minute bar was, was kind of big. Um, we sold off uh, using just a 20 point stop. And on this candle, since it was larger than 20 points, I just cut the candle in half and use the midpoint as my stop and uh, just kind of set it and forget it. Let it go that 20 points. We just kind of chopped around for, oh, most of the morning and then got this bigger sell off a um, little bit after that, uh, that 90 minute mark. So if I'm in a trade, I'll, you know, let it do its thing after the 90 minutes, but I'm not going to initiate a new trade after that point. So that was a 20 pointer on Friday. Um, Thursday ended up being a little stop out. Wasn't, a huge candle so that one stopped me out Wednesday we ended up not making it to the 20 point mark so this was the low of the first 15 minutes we traded down traded back in traded down and so we got towards the end of the day and I still hadn't got my plus 20 so I just, we were like an hour uh, away from the close. I just came over, looked at the nicey tick, and watched for us to make a low tick, and I ended up getting out, um, so it was plus 15 points on that one, ended up getting out pretty close to the low of the day because I corresponded my exit with a low tick, and um, yeah, I, I mean, that's fine. 15 points, it's not 20, but 15 is certainly more than zero, so I was fine with that, um, and that does happen. If it's kind of a slower day, 
we may not make it all the way to plus 20. And in that case, uh, just, you know, I don't like to wait really close to the close. So like if it's an hour and, you know, I'm up 15 points like that, uh, I'll, I'll try and just, just get out. Uh, let's see, that takes us to Tuesday. That was here, and that was another one where we spent a lot of time moving sideways in the morning session, and then boom, the plus 20 came after uh, that 90-minute mark, and that one was a nice, um, when it, once it fell, we fell hard. And then Monday didn't really do anything. We came down, and then that one was just a, was a stop out. So um, nice week, one, two, three, well, three winners and two losers uh, on that 15-minute breakout for last week. And then today started off the, the week with no 15-minute uh, breakout trade. So um, watch the daily chart if we move higher for a close above that 61.8. That'll be a, a key point for us um, to, to close above. And uh, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. I hope everyone has a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday if you're in the U.S. and uh, a great week of trading. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you all soon.